Hey, this is Mike. I am in Whiteville, North Carolina, visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and I'm checking out a 2016 Dodge Journey Crossroad in red. And the name of the color is Redline Two Coat Pearl. So let's go ahead and check it out. This one, since it's the Crossroad, has the awesome hyper black 19 inch alloy wheels which I really like the looks of those and they match pretty much any color the vehicle uh, comes in and you have the ventilated disc brakes there in the front and the solid disc brakes here in the back check those out you see it has the privacy glass the roof racks there on the top the metallic accents there across the bottom let's take a look here in the front you see we have the halogen reflector headlights here in the front as well as the fog lights here in the bottom. Now you notice the fog lights are surrounded by a gloss black accent there and then the rest of it's a kind of flat or satin black across the bottom and then you have that metallic accent and then you have the crosshair in the combination of shiny black and then the matte black looking pretty good. So this is what the key looks like. It's a proximity key and Dodge uses this key for a lot of different vehicles. So it's basically a key fob. It does actually have a physical key on the inside which you can take out with that little lever there. But basically uh, you can lock and unlock the buttons there. You also, um, the doors, you also have a panic button. But really you don't even have to take the key out of your pocket. So the vehicle is locked now. I'm going to put the key in my pocket and walk up and you see the little lock is down i put my hand behind the handle and it unlocks the door so all i have to do is uh, to relock it i just push this button so put my hand behind the handle it unlocks the door push the button locks the door so you don't ever have to take the key out of your pocket to get in your vehicle because it senses your key and it senses senses your hand position so here's the inside of the passenger door pretty much everything's black but you do have a lot of soft touch materials here on the sides around where your arm will be and then you have a little pocket there there power windows and all that and then you have a little bottle holder there on the door but the door is pretty good size to allow you to get through and get in and out of the vehicle so you can see the seat is pretty good ways off the floorboards which gives you a nice chair um, feel so you're pretty comfortable so there's your black cloth seats and it has this act, kind of a pattern there in the center and and it's not just the pattern there is a little bit of a texture difference too in the feel of the the cloth so manual adjustments here on the on basically all seats plenty of room in the leg you're plenty of leg room here you can see uh, which the seat is all the way back and i'm going to show you the uh the difference in the back there in a second but this is the maximum amount of leg room you'll here have here in the front and you have a little net pocket take a look at the lockable glove compartment it has a little space to put your manual or whatever in there as well but overall it's kind of small so let's take a look here in the back door now the back door is pretty interesting because it goes all the way out. Now look at that. It almost goes at almost a 90 degree angle away from the vehicle. So that really gives you the ability to enter and exit the vehicle a lot easier when you don't have this door in your way. So I really like that. So I went ahead and put the seat all the way up in the front so you can see the maximum and minimum. The driver's side is all the way back and this seat is all the way for forward. And so here's your back seats, and that is a 60-40 folding seat, but you can also recline the seat. So you see on the 60 side, I already have it reclined for you. And then you can see the other seat is more of a upright position there. And you can slide the seats forward and back. You can fold them down for storage, but you can also uh, move them out of the way to enter the third row, which I'll show you that in just a second. So you have this armrest that folds down and it has some cup holders and stuff there. 
you have a 12 volt power supply that's hooked directly to the battery but one of the coolest things about the journey is these little storage bins here on the floor you can see this little covers there so basically you have the ability to um, actually I'm gonna go ahead and move the floor mat out of the way and show you so like right now you just have a normal floorboard we actually have the ability to put stuff in the floor and it's basically I mean I would recommend putting valuables and stuff in there so you can put all your valuables and stuff and that way nobody knows where it is and it's completely out of the way so you can also take this liner out and dump it so you can use it as a cooler you can use it as a trash can so the whole liner just comes right on out easy to clean which is a really cool feature and when you're not using it or when you even when you are using it it's completely out of the way so entering the third row you have this little lever switch so you actually have three levers so here's one this is for moving your seat forward and back this is for folding the seat down and this is for entering the third row so I'm gonna pull that forward and it kind of sandwiches up the seat like so and then you just kind of push it forward like that that way you have a little bit of a room to walk into the third row so here's your third row seats and they're kind of small I would say for adults I mean you could probably put some adults back there on a pinch but you know taking a long trip or something you can see the seats are a little bit low to the floor so an adult would have their knees sticking up in the air the whole time but you know in a pinch it's not a problem but just long trips it might be so the storage position or the cargo position I should say is like this you just pull this up and this kind of flops down and that is your cargo mode and you can have a combination of passenger and cargo space same thing with the back seats I'll show you that in a second so let's take a look here in the back you see the privacy glass is really really dark um, but you can see out fairly well see it has that metallic accent across the bottom and a single exhaust on this side so opening up the tailgate the lever is all the way underneath the E on this side just pull it and it kind of goes up the rest of the way by itself you do have to pull it out slightly so here's your storage space with all seven passengers in place uh, this is how much you get now if you need to have some more storage space of course you can fold these seats down and you start to have a massive amount of storage space I think it's like nine feet or something all the way up to the uh, dashboard so when you start folding seats down you have a whole bunch of room you also have some space under here in case you want to put some stuff out of sight and out of the way additional space and then you have uh, your tire tools there in that little spot 12 volt power supply here in the back is always handy and then you have places for tie downs there on the sides and you could probably put a net pocket back here if you wanted to fuel door is on the driver's side which is pretty handy and my preference and some people say it's a little bit of a safety issue and it has the uh, if you don't have it on the driver's side but uh, it has a little place to hang your cap away from the awesome red paint so you don't scratch it while you're pumping gas which is always a good thing to do take a look on this side just to give you another point of view and also uh, move this seat all the way forward so you can see the contrast between all the way back and all the way forward and the adjustments so I'm sitting in the back seat and with my knees straight forward and this the front seats all the way back mind you um, they're actually touching a little bit the back the, the back of the front seat so I'm six feet tall and I probably wouldn't have my feet my knees straight forward so uh, I'd have them a little bit more on the sides there which is not too bad and it's pretty comfortable back seat especially since I can recline the seat which I'm gonna do now a little bit so we can check out some stuff here in the in the headliner we have some air conditioning vents some lights over here and we also have some climate controls so you got your fan speed your temperature and where you want the air to blow here in the back which is always handy because I don't like to be at the mercy of the climate control of the people in the front because I <laughs> I get hot easier so than the average person
take a look at the third row climate control and lights. So to start the vehicle, as long as you have the key inside the vehicle somewhere, whether it be in your pocket, in the cup holder, or whatever, just put your foot on the brake and push this button. And it starts right up for you. Now if you wanted accessory mode, uh, without starting the engine, just want to listen to the radio or something, uh, just leave your foot off the brake and push the button. Let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a little latch just a little bit to the right of the crosshairs here and it's right about in this position you just move it to the left and then you lift up the hood and it does require a prop here to hold the hood up but it's fairly light so I'm assuming it's a it's an aluminum hood so here's the engine it's a 2.4 liter 173 horsepower 166 pound-feet of torque four cylinder and it's made it to a four cylinder a four speed automatic transmission you see there's plenty of room around the engine and this vehicle also uh, is available with the 3.6 liter v6 if you wanted to have that so here's the inside of the driver's door you see it has the bottle holder and all that stuff just like the other side except for it has a few more buttons you have your door lock controls power window controls side mirror adjustments there and the driver's side window is automatic, but it's only automatic down. So I could push it one time, it'll go down like so, but uh, you have to hold it in order to go up. I guess that's a safety feature or something. So here's your manual adjustments on the driver's seat. And you have this, the ability to go up and down with this adjustment here. Your headlight controls are here. You have off, there's your parking lights, there's your headlights, and then push this for your fog lights. And then your interior dimmer switches uh, is here. You also have a parking brake here on your, for your left foot to operate. Okay, so here we are on the inside, 2016 Dodge Journey Crossroad. Plenty of room. I mean, that's one thing about this vehicle is there's lots of room. There's a lot of versatility. Um, my legs have a lot, my knees have a lot of room there. So let's go ahead and start here on the steering wheel. It's a leather wrapped steering wheel with very good thickness and comfort. And you can see it has the metallic accents around the outside, which looks cool. looks pretty cool. So your cruise control is here on the right. So you can on and off set it with the negative button and then your speed and cancel. On the back of the steering wheel back here is a toggle switch and a center button. And this toggle switch is for your volume for your radio. So I can go up and down on the volume. And I can also, the center button will cycle through AM, FM, uh, satellite radio, that kind of stuff. On the back of the steering wheel on this side is for changing through your stations, and then the center button is to cycle through your presets. So here's some buttons on this side. Your voice recognition button and your phone button are on this side. So once you pair your phone, you'll be able to push a button and say, call Stephen Underwood or whoever happens to be in your phone book on your phone, and it'll call them right up. And then you can answer calls with that button as well. So here's some buttons that correspond with this little menu between the gauges. And you see the gauges, the RPMs here on the left, engine coolant temperature there, and then your speedometer here on the right, and your fuel gauge there on the bottom. So this little menu system right here, information center, you have your odometer top center, outside temperature, digital compass there, and right now where it says vehicle speed. So that's part of a menu system. We don't have to have that there. So the digital speedometer, I'm going to go back out of that. So you can see that's just part of an option that you can choose. So you can go into fuel economy, see what kind of what you're getting and what, you know, your averages and stuff like that. You can go into your trips. You have trip A and trip B. You can go in there and see your tire pressure, that kind of stuff. So 
vehicle info will give you more specifics on temperatures and pressures. But I think the, uh, you can also turn the menu off, but I think the default for me anyway would be your vehicle speed. But the, all that information there, like your tire pressure and, and temperatures and pressures, uh, you don't actually have to keep an eye on them all the time. It'll actually come up and alert you if there's anything that's out of spec. All right, you have some window, I mean, windshield washer controls there for front and back. Also, I want to mention this is a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. So this is a little lever that goes down, it unlocks the steering wheel. So you can go uh, up and down, in and out, get it just right where you want it. And then you lift this up back in place. So it gives a little bit of an effort to put it in place. But once it's in place, it really locks the steering wheel solid. So here's your center stack, and it starts off with your vents there at the top, and then you have your radio. So right now we're in the radio screen. You have the presets there at the top. You can uh, change AM, FM, satellite radio, that kind of stuff in the, uh, the radio there, like so. And then you have your player. Now there's different media players. So basically you have the ability to play music through Get back there through auxiliary input, CD player, USB, and wirelessly through your Bluetooth audio. And the screen always stays up for a few seconds to so you can choose. But uh, so really, the, I really like the wirelessly th through the Bluetooth audio, that's pretty cool. So you can keep update your songs on your phone or whatever and just play your music that way. But it does have the CD player down here if you need to use that. Pushing this button will show some climate control. So the climate control is off, let's turn it on. So you have your temperature there, your fan speed, and if you push a button, it pops up and gives you like your dual zone right here like that. And then I can push the fan speed and I can adjust it like this, or I can adjust it with the arrows going up and down like so. And then where I want the air to blow, I can put it here, there, and then I have my defrosters there, and the rear defroster will also turn on your uh, heated side mirrors as well. And you can sync uh, your climate control, or you can have a dual zone, whichever you want. And then over here, you can go into all kinds of different settings, your clock settings, lights, doors and locks, all kinds of stuff there. Uh, the more button will give you, um, this is pretty cool, it gives you the ability to have a big clock there, because sometimes you're running late, and you just want to focus on the time, you can have that. You can also have this compass and shows you which direction you're facing, which is pretty neat. And of course you can check out your phone settings here. And we're not going to pair a phone, but once you do pair a phone, you'll have access to your phone book, recent calls, you'll have a little dial pad to dial add on, and you'll be able to transfer it back to your cell phone in case you want a private call. And if there's other people in the vehicle, and you just want a private call, you can transfer it back to your cell phone. And you can always turn the screen off if it's just annoying you or get distracting you, and you just touch the screen and always turn it back on. Default is pretty much the radio, I think. So you have a storage pocket in here, it's pretty good size. And then you have some redundancy, redundant buttons, and so that way you don't always have to go to the touch screen. You can adjust your volume, tune through your stations, your temperature, your fan speed, um, different climate control options there as well. Then you have your four-way flashers there. We already saw the CD player, which is just below. And then you have a 12-volt power supply and a pretty good-sized pocket down here to load up some junk in. And then you have some cup holders with a little bit of ambient light around the outside. I don't know if you could see that. Uh, I have to show you this car at night. It's, it's pretty neat. A lot of stuff's backlit. So here's your shifter, and it's simple as that. Just Put your foot on the brake and you're able to shift gears like so. There's a drive. And if you want to change to the gear ratios yourself, there's four gears. So you can put it down here like that and you can bump it up and down your, your gear. So you'll know what gear you're in because it'll show you right here on the information screen. Now if you accidentally put it down in there, um, of course you can always put it back up. So just make sure that when you put it in drive, you put it in that position, not all the way down, because it's real easy to just put it all the way down into the manual mode. Okay, so here's your armrest, and it's pretty thick to where you can share it with your passenger, I guess. 
and then this opens up and you have this little tray that comes out and there's a 12 volt power supply that's linked directly to the battery so it'll it'll work uh, even with the vehicle off so if you want to charge your phone or whatever when you know going into the store and all that stuff you can and there is your auxiliary and USB ports for playing music through the sound system also you can slide it back like so instead of lifting it up so like say um, you know if you just want to quickly access the auxiliary and USB you can do that you know or just grab something right there without actually having to lift it up so because lifting it up sometimes it's a little awkward while you're trying to drive so you can slide it back which is pretty cool so here's your rear view mirror it's an auto dimming rear view mirror and you have little microphones on top for your Bluetooth system have little tap lights here in case you want a quick reading light and they're a little they articulate sort of like in the old airplanes I don't know if they still have those in airplanes or not place to put your shades is here and check this out you lift it up and drop it there and you have a conversation mirror so you can keep an eye on the backseat drivers and see what they're doing it's pretty neat it's a wide angle view so you can see everything if you have a garage there's your power garage your universal garage door opener uh, home link system there so you can pair that with your garage door opener there's your mirrors and lights in the visors it's got the same thing on that side and this dashboard is made out of a root kind of a feels like a nerf football uh, <laughs> a soft material it's really interesting and so I guess that's a safety feature like if you accidentally uh, hit your head or something on it that'll help out with that but but also it's a non-reflective surface which helps out with the Sun uh, not shining on you also the side doors um, have a similar type feel a little bit more uh, firm on the side doors but it's all soft to the touch okay let's take a look in the visibility there in the back since we have a third row vehicle uh, that's a sometimes an issue because of all of the headrests so you can see it's not too bad I mean if you put the seats down when you're not using them it helps out a little bit but you can still see because you have so many windows for one thing which helps out all right there you have it 2016 Dodge Journey Crossroad edition at Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Whiteville North Carolina so I don't work for any car dealer I actually work for you so if you have any suggestions or comments or anything please leave it in the comment section I really appreciate it any corrections you know stuff like that so thank you for watching and thank you to Van Underwood here in Whiteville North Carolina for allowing me to show off another awesome vehicle and before I let you go I'm just gonna show you the window sticker just in case you want to use the pause button and you can get all the details almost all the details okay see you next time